Hey, how you doing? My name is Emilio, and today we're gonna go through the steps on how to get your Synology NAS working with your VMware environment. We're gonna look at how to essentially create a data store from some storage on your Synology NAS and get VMs built on your uh, Synology NAS through VMware. It's very, very cool, very, very easy to do as well. We're gonna go through those steps today. Before we do that, please remember as always to subscribe to my channel, clicking on that bell to be kept up to date with everything that is going on. All right, so if you're watching this, you've probably got yourself a Synology NAS of some sort in a home environment. You could have a home version of a Synology NAS or in the enterprise in a business, having a more enterprise type of Synology NAS. You could have a normal small one, a two disc, a four disc, an eight, a 16, a 32, uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, but the process is really the same. As long as you're running a newer operating system version of your Synology NAS software. We're gonna be doing this on the newer version of VMware ESXi through vCenter or through an ESXi host. Uh, you could be running 6.5, 6.7 or 7.0. Really the steps are exactly the same. And really what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Synology NAS, we're going to allocate some storage storage for a essentially creating a data store on our VMware environment, uh, mounting that data store, which is actually storage on the Synology NAS. So then you have a place to be able to go and build your VMs. So we're going with the assumption that you've already built your Synology NAS, that it is set up and it's configured. You've got a working version of VMware as well with some ESXi hosts or even a vCenter environment. We're not gonna talk about the config right there, but what we are gonna talk about is how to get your Synology NAS and your VMware to talk to each other on the network, what you need to do to get them talking on the network, and then creating the relevant storage to be able to go and build VMs. So let's now cross over to my computer. We're now gonna log into our Synology interface, our Synology front end, our web console, and go through those steps. Okay, so what we've now done is we've connected into our Synology NAS. So right here is my Synology NAS. Uh, just for the purpose of this demo, this is a DS920 Plus Synology NAS, but the process is really the same on other Synology NASs, uh, as long as you've got a new version of the operating system. And then I've also got my VMware ESXi host. Make sure that you are running a newer version, new like 6.5, 6.7 or 7. Uh, the process really is the same across all of those. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're now gonna log into our ESXi host. You can do this via vCenter or ESXi. We're gonna do it directly via an ESXi host and log in with my root credentials. And there's a bit of an overview about my environment, uh, the version that I'm running. So you'll see that I'm running 6.7, but as I said, 7 is exactly the same. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's on 7, 6, 7, or 6.5. So what we're gonna need to do is we need to now uh, navigate essentially to the storage area on your ESXi host or in vCenter and uh, create a new data store that is actually relevant to a folder that's sitting on your Synology NAS. So within your storage area, before we actually go and create a new data store, it's important to give your Synology NAS the relevant rights to your ESXi host. So in my case, uh, my IP address is uh, 172.16.1.100 of my ESXi host specifically. And on my Synology NAS, I need to essentially grant a specific folder that's going to be acting as my data store um, to that ESXi host. Now we're gonna be doing this over NFS. So the first thing that I would do is now click on the main menu section right here and select control panel. Control panel will open up. We then select shared folder and we now need to allocate one of these shared folders with adequate permissions so that it can be read and mounted essentially as a data store within VMware. We are selecting data. This is my shared folder. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is within file station, if I open up file station, you see that within my data folder that corresponds to this data shared folder, I've got a folder in here called ESXi. ESXi is the folder that we're going to be mapping to. And then the next step is now that we select data, we know what's inside of it, we now need to give this particular folder adequate rights, adequate permission into VMware. Now what we need to do is we need to firstly enable the NFS service on our Synology NAS. By default, this service is turned off. We then need to grant the NFS service access to my data 
uh, shared folder and then give it the relevant rights that it needs to have. Under the services area, we want to select NFS. So you'll see that there's a whole bunch of other protocols in here, including FTP, SMB for Windows, AFP for Apple, those sort of things. But what we need is the NFS service, which is the service that uh, VMware ESXi is familiar with and what's gonna be used to connect into our NAS. So we're gonna tick on that and select save. That service is now turned on. We can now navigate back into shared folder. And the folder that we are uh, considering here, or the one that we are, you know, that we want to use is data. So let's go ahead and select edit and data is uh, selected there. And we're gonna now select NFS permissions on the very far right. By default, this is now empty. So the mount path is volume one forward slash data. So when we're mounting it, you have to keep that in mind. What we wanna do is we now wanna create a new permission. Now, you essentially establish a connection between your Synology and your ESXi host or hosts uh, directly. So what we're gonna do right in here is we're going to add the IP address of the destination host. In my case, it's going to be, as I mentioned before, 1.100, 172.16.1.100. So we're gonna throw that in. We want it to have read write permissions, otherwise you won't be able to read to it and write to it, which is very important. Uh, squash, no mapping, we're gonna leave that as is. Security is sys, we don't want to go and uh, add e extra security in my case, uh, and we'll leave the rest as default. We're not gonna touch anything there and select okay. And now that permission is now set. Now what you would essentially do is if you have more than one host, you'd go in and you'd add all of your hosts into here that way, that particular share data has access to all of the IPs that are listed within your uh, NFS permissions section, okay? If we're happy with that, great. The next step that I just like to do, just to make sure it's all okay, is under permissions, is ensuring that admin has proper read write access because you may be asked for credentials and the credentials that we're gonna be using are admin, which have got read write access to that data folder and okay. So that is now ready to go. Now what we'll do is just we'll show you what's within my data folder. So within uh, file station where you can just navigate what's going on, I've got data and I've got some folders in here, applications, documents, pictures, etc. stuff that I like to have for myself. Uh, but then I've got a folder called ESX, should be probably called ESXi, but ESX is the folder. Uh, let's actually rename it, hey? Probably good to give it an actual uh, name. ESX used to be the old name, by the way, back in the day, and then it changed to ESXi. And then within here, I've got a whole bunch of stuff in here already. I've got a number of VMs that I've already previously created, uh, and I just want to remount these into my ESXi host so that I can then connect to these. Yours could be completely empty, but it I would recommend not only just uh, mapping it to a share, but perhaps have a folder in there that is relevant for all of the storage of all of your VMs. Let's now go back into my ESXi host. Now it's ready to go. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna select new data store. Now there's a few different options here. You've got create new VMFS, add existing, uh, expand existing VMFS. Now the VMFS is what you're gonna be using if you are mounting a SAN generally. And there's things like LUNs uh, that have been created and those LUNs are presented to your, um, you know, to your host, for example, if it's over fiber channel, iSCSI, you're gonna be doing things like zoning, things like that. Um, this demo is not covering VMFS and iSCSI and fiber channel. That's a different video, other videos that I've got that talk about that. This one is focusing specifically on NFS. We are going to mount an NFS data store, which is the protocol that we've turned on on the Synology NAS. Select next, let's just give it a meaningful name calling it primary data store. The NFS server is the IP address, uh, or the fully qualified name, but I recommend the IP address of the NFS server, which is of course the Synology NAS. So adding the IP address, which I know is that right there, yours will be different. Make sure that you put in the correct IP address. The NFS share is now the path that you want to be saying, this is the path to where my data store uh, points. Okay, now remember, if we go back to our Synology NAS, we've got a few things. Under data, edit, NFS permissions, here's the path down the bottom, forward slash volume one, forward slash data, and then within data, I've got ESXi. So that is the full path that I'm going to be connecting to. 
back to my ESXi, volume one, forward slash data. Now remember, this is case sensitive, okay? A lot of people have issues and like, why isn't it working? It's case sensitive. Forward slash ESXi. We leave the NFS version as NFS3. Next, here's the summary of what's gonna happen. We click finish. And if everything has worked correctly, uh, that should have mounted, okay? You'll see that it says uh, the capacity, which is the capacity of my SAN, uh, of my NAS, uh, what's free, the type is NFS, and it's done. It's ready to go, which is excellent. Um, if yours failed for whatever reason, you're gonna have to go back, review some of the stuff that I talked about, uh, review that the NFS has been turned on, the, the service has been turned on, that the permissions are correct, that you've added the ESXi hosts to be able to be um, given the relevant rights to be able to connect to it. But that is really the steps to get it now mounted as a data store. Now, the great thing is I can right from here, I can right click on my data store and uh, do browse. And there is the contents of my data store, exactly the same contents as what's in here. Okay, very, very easy. So right from here, I can then go and create my VMs, I can build VMs, I can move things around, uh, and I can point those VMs to the primary data store, which is now my Synology NAS, which is a share that I've created and the folder within that share over NFS. So there you have it. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Hopefully you were successful in getting your Synology NAS talking to VMware and vice versa. Let me know in the comments below if that worked for you, if you found this helpful. I would really love to know. As well as that, please like this video and most importantly, subscribe to my channel to be kept up to date with what's going on by clicking on that bell so that you are notified when I'm releasing new videos. Thanks for watching. Really, really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.